Welcome to Cyber GMBC. We are blessed to have you join us this last week of 2020. This has been a trying year, but thanks to God, we are embarking upon a brand new year. We pray that you will continue to join us and that your cyber experience will be blessed. Shall we pray? Divine God, we come now. We are grateful, we are thankful for yet another day in which you have allowed us to see. We have not earned it, we do not deserve it, but Lord, we thank you. For this is the day that you have made and we are to rejoice and be glad therein. We come now, Lord, to this altar. We come with issues, we come with concerns, we come with problems. Lord, knowing that you are the answer and the solution to our issues, our problems, and questions. Lord, we ask now that those that are under the sound of my voice, those that are listening to us virtually, O oh Lord, whatever their concerns are, whatever their conditions are, whatever their afflictions are, Lord, whatever the sickest situations are, we ask that you touch them and bless them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we are still in the midst of this pandemic with numbers increasing as we speak. Lord, we are facing the possibility of a vaccine, but Lord, there's still apprehension. There's still hesitation, Lord. So Lord, we're praying right now in the name of Jesus that questions that need to be asked are answered. Situations that need to be consulted and handled are taken care of, oh Lord. And Lord, that you allow us to exercise faith and not foolishness. Lord, we ask you to bless everyone that's a part of our church family, those that are bereaved, those that may be dealing with depression, oh Lord, those who may feel lonely. Lord, we ask you to touch all of those mental situations, oh Lord. Then those of us, Lord, that have lost loved ones, those of us that will not be able to be around our loved ones this year, Lord, during this holiday season, Lord, we pray right now in the name of Jesus. For those, O oh Lord, within our church family, Lord, and our listening audience, O oh Lord, that have lost loved ones between this time and this time last year. We pray, Lord, for comfort among their spirits, among their hearts, O oh Lord. We thank you for the life and legacies of our loved ones that have gone on to glory. That are no longer here, Lord, that their legacy and their memories are blessed upon us. We ask you to continually bless our church family, Lord, as we function in the midst of this pandemic, as we continue in ministry, O oh Lord, that what we do will be relevant, it will be real, O oh Lord, that it will touch hearts, souls, and minds. We thank you, O oh Lord, for every person that's a part of our church family, Lord, for every person who views in on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram, O oh Lord, and even our webpage. For those that listen in to us, O oh Lord, for those that join our weekly Zooms, O oh Lord, we thank you for the ability to connect even in this pandemic. Lord, we pray right now for our governments, O oh Lord. We pray for the leaderships on every level. Lord, we come against the works of the enemy that would try to overturn what has happened a month ago. Lord, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that every sinister plan before you, O Lord, and that your will will come forth. Lord, we thank you for grace, mercy, love, and your tenderness, your compassion you have for us, O Lord. We ask now that you bless this day. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. <laughs> Oh, yes, he's the lion of Judah. Oh, he woke you up, started you on your way. He's a good guy. Y'all, come on and help me sing this. You're the lion of Judah. Lion of Judah. You are my Lord and King. You are my Lord and King. You're the lion of Judah. Lion of Judah. You reign over everything. You reign over everything. You're the lion of
a good God. Oh, I love to praise him. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's a good God, and he's worthy to be praised. Hey, come on, y'all. You're the Lion of Judah. Lion of Judah. You are my Lord and King. You are my Lord and King. You're the Lion of Judah. Lion of Judah. You reign over everything. Reign over everything. You're the Lion of Judah. Lion of Judah. You are the great I am. You are the great I am. You're the Lion We thank you for this opportunity to give to be a blessing. Lord, we ask you to bless that what we give be used to continually build your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. We ask now that you bless us, keep us, lead us, and guide us. In Christ's name we do pray. Amen and amen. Giving honor to God, who's the head of my life, to my pastor, Reverend Dr. Johnny Duckworth. Thank you for such an opportunity as this. To my ministry colleagues, the GMBC family, to family, friends, and our guests who are watching live or on replay. To God be the glory for all the things that he has done, for all the things that he is doing, and all the things that he will do. If you will bow your heads with me in prayer. 
Father, we thank you today for this hour. We thank you, Lord, and invoke your Holy Spirit in this place. I ask, oh God, that you speak through me that all that I've studied, all that I've meditated on, you will use to your glory. Father, hide me behind your Holy Spirit that your message may be heard. You know the needs of your people, Lord, so use me as you would, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. We are definitely living in what some may call perilous times. Over the last nine months, we have seen many changes in our lives. Some of us have loved ones that have made their transition. Some of us have loved ones that we cannot visit or see. Our children have been regulated to home classrooms and our normal way of corresponding with each other has been altered. However, I suggest to you that even in these changing times, what may look like crazy on an ordinary day is actually in God's divine order. Because the word tells us that he will use all of these things, all of these situations, circumstances, and changes that take place in our lives. He will use it for our good to get us to our expected end. So today we're going to look at a scripture from the book of Psalms 27, chapter 13 through the 14th verse. And it's going to give us an idea of what we can do during times like these. Um, one songwriter said, these are times in life that make you want to holler and just throw up both your hands. Amen? There most likely have been some situations, circumstances, and disappointments that made you want to give up on your dreams and desires. There are moments even now, at this very moment, you have something on your mind that may have you distracted. And trust me, in the days to come, in the days ahead, there are going to be some days that try your very spirit. And in times like these, when many are feeling frustrated, fearful, angry, lonely, and overwhelmed, which seems to be the new operative word today, the questions that beg to be asked is, how do I survive? How do I overcome in times like these? What do I do when I am broke, busted, and disgusted, mentally, physically, economically, and spiritually? What do I do when it seems all of life's fiery darts are being thrown at me? Well, today we're going to look at Psalms 27 and 13, and I'm going to read two versions, one from the Amplified and the other from the King James Version. Amplified says, what, what would have become of me had I not believed to see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living? Wait and hope for and expect the Lord. Be brave and of good courage. And let your heart be stout and enduring. Yes, wait and hope for and expect the Lord. The King James Version, which most of us may be familiar with, it says, I had fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, 
on the Lord. Today, to help us with these permeating questions, these contemplative questions, David threw up both his hands and volunteered to share his story. David, the one whom God called a man after his own heart, David said, I had my share of life's ups and downs. I would have become weak in my body and spirit. I would have lost strength and courage. I would have been overwhelmed, done in, and given up had I not believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living in my lifetime. The Psalms 73 of which are ascribed to David, out of those 73, approximately 12 to 14 of those are directly about specific events that happened in his life. And he says, you can find my entire story starting in 1 Samuel chapter 16 through the book of 1 Kings chapter 2. But here are a few reasons why my confidence in God was so great. Why I believe in the goodness of the Lord. I had developed an historical relationship with God, and in spite of my faults, God had been graciously good to me. So I titled this sermon, We Come This Far by Faith. David said, I walked a long way with God. I started at the age of 16 being anointed as king. However, I was not able to take on that post until I was 30. I know God to be faithful. He said God forgave, corrected, guided, protected, and provided for me. David said when I lied to protect myself, God forgave me. When I yielded to temptation with Bathsheba and her hus had her husband killed, God forgave and corrected me. God provided the means necessary to stand up to Goliath. And I'm sure many of us have all types of Goliaths in our lives. Financial Goliaths, relational Goliaths, economic Goliaths, employment Goliaths. Our children losing their mind, Goliaths, amen? But God protected me also from King Saul when, we tried, when he tried to kill me on several occasions. I find my, found myself at one point hiding in a cave to avoid his destruction. God protected me also from my own son, Absalom. And he also guided me when I disobeyed him and took a census of the people. The basis of David's testimony witnesses that, is that he had had enough background with the Lord, enough background information, enough experience with the Lord to believe that God would do what he said he would do in his word. David was one that whenever he got off kilter. Whenever he stepped out of the will of God, he would always, always go back to God and pray. He would always praise God for who he was and what he would do in his life. He would always give God the glory and magnify his name. So because of that, David said that my Lord is a light. He's my guide. He said that God is my salvation, my deliverance. He gives me grace and mercy each and every day. I can trust in him because he is faithful. He is my strength when I am weak. He said he is my life, the very air that I breathe. David said that my confidence is built on God because he has never failed me yet. He is my protector from the wicked, enemies and foes, and he is my refuge from the multitudes. He is my ever-present help 
in time of war. And David said, that's why I can call him my light. And this is what keeps me from being afraid. In times of trouble, David testified that God hid him in his pavilion, in his secret place, in the sanctuary where the presence of the Lord resided. He said, God hid me in his tabernacle, and God set me up on a rock. God lifted me above all my enemies who were around me. Psalms 3 and 3 says, he is the lifter of our head. And if that wasn't enough, David said, let me tell you again, God had been my help. He delivered me. He took me up, and I believed in the goodness of God because of his track record. His track record that I saw with Moses. His track record that I saw with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So I knew him to be true. I knew him to be faithful. I knew him to be God all by himself. My only concern was is that one day, that he would allow me to see him in his holy temple, that I could dwell with him there and be with him. In spite of all else, that was David's longing and desire. And because I found God to be a promise keeper and ever-present help in the time of trouble, I believe he would do then what he had done before because he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I had to go through some stuff, David said, but I knew I was talking about a God who was able. So I asked David, how do I help the people to see, to remember what God has done for them so they can stay on their walk of faith? And David said, I thought you would never ask. He said, tell them what he's done for you. Tell them about the times you would have fainted unless you had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in your day and time on this side. Tell them how God has been faithful to you. And I said, okay, I can do that. I can do that. And so I said, I would have fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord when the junior high school bully tried to take me out. I would have fainted when I lost two of my best friends, one to drugs and one in a high school swimming accident. I would have fainted when I lost my grandmother, my roommate, and better best friend. I would have fainted when I was divorced, single parent, and lost my income. When I was talked about and abused, I would have fainted. I would have fainted when I searched for love in all the wrong places made decisions that did not have a positive outcome. He brought me up out of the black abyss of depression. And when my hands were crushed in a carjack, but not a bone was broken, nor a nerve severed. When I looked back over my life and how God provided for me each and every day, when I think about all the things that God has done, my soul shouts hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm asking you today to take a moment and just look back over your life. Think about all the things that God has done for you, how he's brought you through, how he saved you, how he's made a way for you, how he's kept you in the midst of the storm, how he has provided for your daily needs, how he opened doors that you could not see. The Bible says that the Lord, it is he that doth go before us. He will be with us. He will not fail us nor forsake us. So fear not and neither be dismayed because God will take care of you. Isaiah 41 and 10 says, fear thou not for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God, I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. 
Romans 5 and 8 says, But God commanded his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we not faint. So Shirley Caesar said, When I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I've got a testimony. So we got to remember there's no testimony without a test. And even when we take our test, if we believe in God's word as we say we do, we know that God will see us through. There ought to be someone out there who can say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? The songwriter says, he kept my enemies away, and he let the sun shine through a cloudy day. He rocked me in the cradle of his love when he knew I had been battered and scorned. There ought to be someone out there who can say, I'm learning to lean. I'm learning to lean. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Finding more power than I've ever dreamed. And I'm learning to lean on Jesus. There ought to be someone out there who can say, we've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. He never failed me yet. And the songwriter goes on to say, I cried, oh. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to cry out to him and say, and know, and stand on his promises, and don't turn around, and remember that we come this far by faith. Donnie McKirkland put it this way, great is your mercy toward me, your loving kindness toward me, your tender mercies I see day after day after day, forever faithful towards me, and you're always providing for me, and great is your mercy toward me. I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for keeping us thus far. Thank you for bringing us all this way. We continue to walk in your word, Lord. We've come this far by faith, and we won't Give up, Lord, because we know that it's in you that we live and have our being. It's not in man, because you already told us in your word that lay not your treasure upon earthly things where the moth can come in and steal. Lay not your treasure in men, amen, because the power is in you. You, Lord, you rule, you reign each and every day. God bless and keep you. And may you remember to walk by faith and not by sight. Because you did not get to today without walking by faith. God is a promise keeper. And he will continue to keep you and protect you each and every day. As we usher out 2020 and welcome 2021, we are grateful to have you with us. Our prayers are that you will remain with us and blessed throughout the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Our Cyber GMBC family would like to wish you a happy new year and we are praying for a blessed 2021. Also, we want to thank you for joining us. If you have giving, we would like to share with you that you can give various ways of your tithes and offerings through Bill Pay, Givelify, PayPal, and Zelle. You can also mail them to the church or drop them in our mail slot at 29066 Eaton, Westland 48186. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Instagram. We pray that you have just experienced a wonderful worship experience. Our prayers go out to those that are still battling COVID-19, those on the front line, those infected by this virus, and the families of those that have lost loved ones to the virus. May God continuously bless you, and may God bless your heart.
Happy New Year.